and it's about their journey of love. How fabulous is that? This episode is all about collaboration with your significant other, the person you love. Tips to working together and making something even more magnificent when those energies of love come together. The author, co-author of Souls in Love, Sophie Ramirez and Sam Yao is also a co-author and it's about their journey of love. How fabulous is that? Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Oh, Maureen, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you and your community. Thank you. And Okay, so you're a best-selling author. Your co-author, Sam's a best-selling author. And you fell in love. Yes, Tell us I about did. the falling in love, the, the adventures in Paris. This is so magical. And when did you guys had that moment that you know you were in love? Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is a, thank you for the question. Oh, well, so we met uh, already a, a certain number of years ago. It was in 2017. We attended a same, similar workshop. Uh, and so I used to attend this workshop for my uh, therapeutic practice. And uh, Sam joined the workshop for the weekend. And so at that moment, when we met, you know, we, uh, we, it was in the context of personal development, spiritual development. So we would, you know, talk about like like friends, like new friends, about our life. Um, we both had to to grieve also, so we had joy to share and also grief to share. And then for uh, the four years after this encounter, uh, we became kindred spirits, so friends, and uh, Sam uh, shared with me, you know, some beautiful poems. Uh, that he published a first book named Soul's Journey uh, that became a bestseller. And so it's an amazing book speaking about many topics, consciousness, and uh, also grieving, and also, um, let's say, the journey of the soul. So, uh, and, uh, you know, the COVID uh, seems to have an impact on us. We started to connect more. Uh, Sam was um, in a special place of his uh, personal life. And uh, then we started to feel that probably the kindred spirits wanted to connect at uh, more levels. So uh, we were connected at the soul level. We were connected as uh, friends. We were connected at a poetic level. We really enjoyed the writing. I enjoyed his writing. Well, hold on, we didn't get to that yet. Hold on, because that's where the collaboration comes in. So the place where you guys came from a place of friendship and, and yes. working together and, and bringing others forward and, and who and what you want. Wait, tell us that special day or night when you sat across from each other and said, Oh wow, this is this is love. Where were you? <laughs> okay. Well, um, I was in my place. So I'm from France, right? In the French Alps and a little city named Annecy. And Sam uh is from California, so he's he's living in California. So I was in France and then I started to feel, you know, words wanted to come. So it's very spontaneous. I can have spontaneous writing. And I felt, oh, this is kind of poem I want to come. So I started to write and I realized that it was writing to him. Uh, literally, you know, it was saying, uh, I see you and I feel you. And at that moment, I felt that, oh, there is, there is something happening. You know, it's like uh, you feel that... Uh, I uh, wanted to discover him, uh, let's say, as also the man dimension. And I thought that is now uh, another dimension that we did not explore till this day. So for me, at that moment, I felt, okay, that's the woman who is feeling the man, you know. So that was, you know, and the two oceans between us, by the way. What you're describing is suddenly you went from friendship to intimacy, right? Exactly. Seeing each other, feeling, and and then the your first date. 
as as um, where was it? Was it in Paris? Was it in the French Alps? Where was your first date? So uh, when we decided to meet and to uh, to let's say to meet at a man woman level, uh, it was a year and a half ago. And then uh, Sam joined me in France when it was uh, possible to come, you know, after the COVID. And uh, well. I mean, we already felt that we were connected at another level of only friendship before he arrived. So a few months ago, we started to feel a kind of another flame between us. And so when we met another first kiss, it was uh, in a lift, in an elevator. Oh, you <laughs> so guys didn't even make it to the restaurant. You kissed in the car. <laughs> no, <laughs> in, in, a, in an elevator after <gasps> after the after the account, uh, yes, at the airport. So... The first kiss was beautiful. Oh, oh, that's even more exciting. Okay, wait. Your first kiss was in an elevator. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> I absolutely, of course, in France. Of course, in France. French kiss. <laughs> yeah. oh. So I, I love that. So it's a t place where you guys really got to know each other as artists, as writers, as leaders in transformation in this world. And you kept in touch. You both were doing your own different projects, uh, Soul's Journey, and then your book. Let, let's let's plug your book. What your first international bestseller? What was the name of your first international bestseller? Yes. Yeah, so, so mine personally. So we wrote a book with a woman who recovered from breast cancer, and so I had a chance, the opportunity, you know, to be with them for a whole week. And some of them manifested a desire to write about their experience of, uh, you know, uh, being recovering from this uh, uh, illness. And so I suggested to them and we, they all wrote a chapter of their own story and the book. So in French, name, j'ai vécu la même chose que toi. So literally translated in English means I too lived it. So it's a book, you know, to give hope, inspiration to people who have to deal with cancer, breast cancer, and also for the people who are accompanying them, families and facilitators, therapists. Yeah. And let's, we're going to link all, all the books below. You did a compilation and brought other authors together to bring strength and healing and support in a book with, with people uh, healing from cancer and working through it and those that they love. A completely different now we're going to get into a completely different it's completely than soul's journey in love and 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 that's the point there and then soul's journey in love is a book of poems that you both collaborated in with you and sam that that described your love and the love Yes, indeed. So I know you 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 like to uh, to speak about the beginning. So uh, when we um, started to become uh, with uh, let's say to become intimate together, and then so we at one point it became quite obvious that we really loved uh, you know the writing of each other, and uh, it really started as why not writing together and choosing a topic, and then so very quickly we felt okay why not writing about love because because this is what we are experiencing together. And uh, so, and we felt that um, because of, uh, you know, long distance relationship, I mean, difference of culture, education, background, we realized that we represent you know, the perfect stereotype of the new relationships in the world because of a pandemic. And so uh, we decided to write about love. Of course, not only about the idealistic a uh, topic of love, but also one of the challenges we can encounter. So, you know, sometimes it can be some misunderstanding or we need to grow together and sometimes we even heal together or one next to each other. So in this book of 42 poems, um, we both wrote 21 poems and we took, you know, topics like uh, uh, passion, commitment, intimacy, healing. And then we both wrote the poems that would come right in the heart and the soul. This is how it started. And so it was, and this is completely different uh, path. Sam writes in poetry, 
but the collaboration created something completely new with its own energy as you guys came together. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, uh, probably we already had uh, some indication when we met that was not supposed, you know, to be, we, we can know in the beginning that it will become a love story many years later. But still, when we met the evening, we had a good time. We attended, uh, it was a concert uh, with music and poems claimed uh, by a, a beautiful woman. And uh, it was a poem about Rumi, you know, the, the, the amazing Rumi poet who would talk about love so magnificently. So, you know, it was a, a good auspicious moment of encounter with Sam. But right in the beginning, we have attended this concert together. So probably it created a kind of, uh, I don't know, a kind, maybe it planted a seed in the mind of poetry for both of us, not knowing that one day the universe will converge to make us write together on similar topic. It's exactly the way it was supposed to be, as you bring this new energy together. So I, I want to talk about the collaboration. Because and, and and I love that there was a span of the different topics in, in the book that, that span the different emotions in a relationship. So with with the, the show that we always say, we always bring people forward. And you guys now working with a significant other is difficult. And the there's lessons to learn and advice. So the first thing you would say is that if you're working with someone that is you're deeply in love with, what would be the first tip that you would give to allow that both people to shine but not step on each other? Wow, that's a that's a beautiful question. Well, uh I, I'm not sure I have the, the perfect recipe, but what worked for us with Sam is that first we, we really respect deeply, you know, who we are uh, as, as people. So I recognize in him, you know, the, the poet he is for quite a while. And then so we know we have a different style, we have different ideas. And then so we really want to listen to each other. So, um, of course, sometimes we may have a, a very strong opinion about something. And then, so it doesn't prevent us to listen to the other one. So the first thing I feel that works between us is listening to each other. Um, that's something that um, really important for us. Then um, sometimes we also use the silence, you know? Sometimes, you know, we are caught by the daily life, by our warm thoughts. Uh, and so sometimes we will just, one or the other one would say, why don't we take a minute of silence? And it does happen, you know, regularly, we will do it. And then it does allow us to connect, you know, to come from here and we come back here. And so that's also something else. We, we both thought, by the way, about uh, conscious silence. Um, also, as partners, uh, I mean, we are ready to embrace all the dimensions of the other one. So partners, lovers, writing together, we enjoy to be connected physically. Of course, you know, we love to kiss, we love to touch each other, but also we love to be connected emotionally. So it is okay to be vulnerable in front of each other. And sometimes it's also, yeah, even uh, it can deepen the connection. So emotional connection, intellectual connection is also a good one. We respect each other's ideas, as I said. So um, this is intellectual connection. And of course, there is the spiritual connection. So we are both happy to learn about each other's uh, soul journey. Um, we both have uh, different experiences with it. Uh, different background. So we enjoy, you know, to navigate and discover, experience the whole spectrum of each other and with the world around. Yeah. I love that because all the things that you're saying are so bringing others forward, particularly, I love the silence, the silence of being able to ground, connect with, with your heart and spirit, and then bring forward together. That's brilliant. 
Mm, thank you. Yes, this is something that even we do when we connect, uh, when I'm in France, you know, we will connect by, by Zoom. <laughs> and then uh, sometimes at one point when we feel we are, you know, caught by the talk, we will take, okay, one minute of silence right now. And we did that in the beginning of the video as we, I was getting grounded. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so in the, the takeaway now, right? What would also be the one thing that you learned that you would do differently? in the sense of whatever that looks like that you would tell other people, okay, this, this is something I learned and, and, and along the way, for instance, could be that you've learned that Sam gives you your coffee before you start writing or that you guys both worked outside or it could be anything. This is one thing. This was the thing that, wow, this, this changed this, and it could be small. Just something um, that you're like, this would be the thing that I would say we changed here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one thing that, yeah, that we probably I could bring earlier in the process is a, a ritual. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we, we traveled. Uh, we loved to travel and to write poetry uh, sometimes outside the home and, you know, outside the daily life, because then we are connected really to inside us and not about the daily life. And even if we speak sometimes about daily life. So a kind of ritual that we can implement earlier, for example, before we release the book uh, in December, we made, uh, we made a little, let's call it like a little altar, you know, with flowers and sending intentions that the book, you know, can touch the people it was intended to touch. We could connect, we could do this kind of ritual earlier to open, you know, to open the creativity. It's not only about us, of course, this book, it's also uh, about uh, sharing with people uh, ideas and principles and, uh, and discoveries. So, ritual to open every day of writing with a little ritual saying, okay, now today we are dedicated to writing for people. Oh, okay. That's that's so powerful. So what you're saying is that the you you establish this declaration, this intention for writing, and that you would have done that earlier. But but this is this is really important. That's that we said. What did this look like? Uh, so just to buy beautiful flowers, and then each flower that we put, you know, on the ground. Uh, so we have a special intention. So it's a way to honor, of course, the book, the poems, but also the people who will receive the book. So it's bringing intention, also bringing emotions, bringing uh, the main messages we want to convey with the book. So to put in these flowers with intention, and then we took a photo of it. And then so it's a reminder that um, we want to infuse uh, our intentions strongly. Um, so the flowers will be, uh, I would say, they become the seeds, you know, for our intentions. So we just manifest in a flower the seeds of intention. Maybe for some people, they start to write their light on a candle. I do also love candles, so I, I don't know how you do for yourself, but this kind of rituals that say, okay, now I'm dedicated to the book, I'm dedicated to the mission. So for us, that will be, I'm dedicated to souls in love today, right now, this is the time for it. So I'm lighting on my candle. This is the candle for the book, for example. So it was, it's something, some type of movement, some type of activity, some type of significant act to say, now we're intentionally writing, lighting a candle, laying out flowers, spraying aromatherapy whatever it's going to be but that's something that you would tell people to do as that's what you guys did yeah it's we we may call it an anchor to mm -hmm. anchor the intention exactly as you said with a with a, a gesture with an action saying okay now it started i love that we get to bring other people follow with that that again enunciate that that with intention because everything is intention and then it was this intentional act that started the manifestation 
Yes, indeed. Well, as we enter, you know, we, we are in the month of uh, of lovers' love. Mm -hmm. We are going very close uh, from uh, Valentine's Day, and um, I remember how happy, joyful, uh, honored I felt each time I received a poem from Sam, wow. and so we would reciprocate. So. Uh, this moment of uh, connection also with words uh, is also important because how can we communicate in this time of the year? So sometimes because we will use words in a specific way, so, you know, we don't need to be a, a perfect poet. This is poetry is really for everybody. <laughs> what we also wanted to convey is that poetry is uh, words, but it can also be a way we will arrange a bouquet the way we uh, will interact with each other, with the world, with nature. So uh, for me, when I write uh, in poetry, I, my heart is speaking differently. Um, meaning this is, uh, words really take uh, another dimension. Yes, I do enter the dimension of words. So the musicality of the words uh, become very important and I don't need to think how I want to write. I just need to feel what I do want to write. And then it comes. So uh, I do invite people to take the time, you know, to take a piece of paper, to take a pencil and thinking, okay, maybe we want to write a love letter to our lover, or maybe we want to write a love letter to ourselves. And then just play with words, let words come in your pencil then they will come through your heart in your pencil and just don't need to think how you write poetry. It's really very simple. So the poetry was and is an extension of the love that you have for others and for the world and the universe around us. Yes, yes, indeed. And uh, it, it does continue, by the way. We intend to write a new book for 2023 that will talk about healing, and but healing in poetry. So poetry does allow us to, uh, I mean, enter a dimension um, that does speak to the soul. I, I, I say quite regularly, poetry is the language of the soul. You know, it's uh, so... Um, yeah. Okay, and there's the new. So then we we get to come back for the second book collaboration. It'll be another collaboration. Yes, indeed. So <laughs> why, you know, why not? <laughs> we enjoy the process. Yeah, it's uh, while sharing a, a passion for words, but also a passion for expression and a passion uh, for. Um, bringing some kind of support to people so um for the, I, I had someone who uh, write me a little text another time saying i wrote a poem named the hummingbird and this poem you know i would uh i would say uh, everybody has someone waiting for him or for herself so it's a message of hope uh about for people who wait for love somehow and so someone would say to me um this is beautiful, but I'm not sure there is someone for everybody. And so um, in that, I felt, oh, wow, this is profound. Um, that do we really have someone waiting for us when we are not yet in a love relationship? So that thing led me to think, really, every poem we share with the world has an impact. So it does lead us to uh, become even more conscious when we write. Uh, about what we write and how it can be received by people. And this is what I love about this dimension of allowing ourselves to share with others what comes from the heart, from the soul, and sometimes maybe by channeling. So it becomes a conscious mission. And what you're saying is that the, the vulnerability that Poetry allows one to be in that state is truly the gift that it is. And that's where the connection, the deeper connection comes from and came from this book, as well as the new book to come. 
Yes, yes, indeed. Well, of course, we wrote and we shared with each other first our poems and we will polish them, as that, uh, some may say. And uh, but after that, it, it does no longer belong to ourselves. Uh, we do. We did intend to write, of course, with the pleasure of poetry, but also not to keep it for ourselves. So intention is to to give it to people. Everybody, Soul's Journey in Love. The links to th the three books will be down below. Any time frame for the next book of poetry that's going to come? What, what is there a working title? Uh, well, you. I mean, Sam's first book in name is Soul's Journey. Right. And so this book we collaborated together about love and is named Souls in Love. We're not sure yet about the title of the next book, but, you know, that will involve souls and healing. So, you know, the order, the exact title, we don't have it yet. It will probably be revealed to us later. Uh, but for sure, that will be involving healing at the soul level. And we're going to allow that to transform to where it gets to go. So it's still it's still staying in its state of creativity, joy and love. So to to come, right? Yes, to come. We don't know exactly. We do intend to publish it before the end of this year, 2023. Ooh. And so that is uh, so we know that probably have around 40 poems, 40, 45, we don't know yet exactly. Yes. So yeah, and uh, so we are working actually about the frame for the book that it make it meaningful and uh, so that it can contain uh, enough element of uh, uh, healing and also hope, inspiration and still creativity and joy too. Can, can you show us the, uh, my, co my copy's in the mail, by the way. Can you show us the cover of the book again? Oh, yes. Thank you. Here it is. <sighs> so the cover, we chose this artwork, uh, which is from Gustav Klimt. So uh, he's a painter. And uh, so when we saw this painting, it really conveyed, you know, uh, what we wanted to express. So there is a matter of alchemy between the two people, the two lovers. There is a lot of uh, gold. There is a lot of symbols in it. And uh, so, yeah, every poem we have in this book uh, is accompanied by an illustration. So we uh, chose illustrations like uh, artworks, paintings, sometimes photographies um, from uh, other people. We had great uh, chance also to have two uh, artists, um, contemporary artists, who accepted that uh, their illustration will be accompanying one of our poems. Uh, so Sam's first book, Soul's Journey, uh, was accompanied by amazing painting. Uh, one of his great friends, um, Olena, made amazing paintings. And in this book, there is a painting of her. So um, it was great to have one. And for my part, I had an artist, uh, Italian, uh, we had an exhibition that we visited very spontaneously in South of France last year, and uh, I was you know, astonished by his paintings, and he accepted when I contacted him to have uh, his painting uh, in our book. So this book is precious for us also because we love um, art in every possible form, you know. Um, so maybe I can show you one of a page of a, one of the poems of Sam. Okay, so this illustration, by the way, is by the artist who already collaborated with him with his first book. So I don't know if you can see it. So um, basically... You know, He's French. Think... Is, is the, the artist is Italian. This artist, you no, know, she's uh, living... Uh, her name is uh, Olena... Uh, I will I will give you the exact name. So no, she's living in the United States, okay. and uh, so she's an artist. I will give you her name because I want to say it correctly. So, uh, okay, this is Olena Zavakevich. So she made many paintings in the first book of Sam, and the artists that I had the chance to have in the book 
um, the Italian one. So I will show you it. His painting. This is this one. So it's with my poem named Invitation to Your Senses. And that's this beautiful painting. You know, that's so a painting? It's a painting. In wow, that, that, that yeah. almost looks like a photograph. It's so vivid. Yeah, we I know we had amazing team who helped us to shape a book and to uh, make uh, every artwork in a, in a good definition. And uh, so uh, this uh, this artist's name is Giorgio Dente. Absolutely. So again, the the book I can show us the cover again. Oh, sure, with pleasure. So Souls in love. in love, Sophie Ramirez, as well as Sam Yao. And um, the link will be below. And it's an experience of joy, love for the soul, and the artwork, the poetry, and the experience and shared love, the collaboration of these two amazing people. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much, Maureen. It's a pleasure. It's a joy. We are happy to be able to talk about love, intimacy, commitment right before Valentine's Day. <laughs> And here we go for you for Valentine's Day.